Okay, and welcome to our very first careers webinar. Uh, we thought no better time to do it than in National Careers Week. Um, so first of all, welcome to everyone and thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, I'm just gonna do a little bit about what's going on in careers at CHS at the moment. And then we've got a lovely speaker from Ask Apprenticeships, Zoe, who's gonna be joining us. Um, so at the moment, in terms of our careers at Christleton High School, we have been working really hard over the last few months to try and implement a stable careers programme. And we have um, been utilising Unifrog um, in form times and um, that's been working really well with all of our forms they get on, on a rotor where they get an opportunity to um, have a week in the classroom working with activities and their form tutors. Now myself, Mrs Lawson and Miss Lister um, have also been looking at things in the future so in terms of careers fairs that are coming up we've got um, work experience for year 10 and for year 12 which is taking a slightly different um, structure this year um, and we've also been working hard to send out newsletters to you every term. However, if there is something that you think we're missing or that you would like to see more of, um, then always feel free to get in touch. We're more than happy um, to work with parents and make sure that we're catering for all students. Um, so what who we've got with us today is Zoe from Ask Apprenticeship. She's absolutely fantastic. Um, and she's going to take you through apprenticeships, how they look, how they've changed over the years, but also um, areas that you should be looking out for. Now, we do have um, a question and answer section. So if you would like to answer, ask a question and we'll try our best to answer it um, as we're working our way through. OK, Zoe, when you're ready. Brilliant. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, right, so I'm just going to share my screen with you um, and then I will be ready for you. Um, so thank you all for joining us um, this evening. Really, really appreciate uh, your time and being here. Um, <laughs> So my name is Zoe and I am here on behalf of the ESFA, which is part of the Department for Education. And the idea is to talk to you a little bit today around apprenticeships. <laughs> now, what I do understand is that some of you on the call are going to be um, parents, carers or guardians of a variety of age ranges. So we might have some people here who are on the call um, on behalf of year seven students all the way up to year 13 students. So some of the information that you're going to hear today <coughs> might not be directly relevant, but it will set you up in good stead about how to support your child um, later on down the line. Um, <coughs> so I'm noticing we're getting some attend more attendees in, which is absolutely fantastic. Welcome, everyone. Um, and uh, this session will be recorded as well. So please don't worry if anyone is, is missing any part of it. If you've missed the beginning, um, it, will, it will be recorded and it will be sent out to you. So let's have a little look at our apprenticeships then. So if any of you are sat there thinking apprenticeships and you are bringing back memories of the YTS um, from years and years and years ago for your £28 a week, please pop those to the side of your minds because apprenticeships have come on so much from what it used to be. There are also um, kind of an idea in people's minds that for apprenticeships they're only really available in um you know if you're interested in um laboring you know if you're interested in becoming a brickie or an electrician or something like that and whilst there are opportunities within that the whole apprenticeship sector has opened itself up now so not only can you get involved with those vocational sectors through an apprenticeship but nowadays students can become solicitors architects accountants, biochemical engineers, astrophysicists, they can become a whole host of both vocational and what has traditionally been a more uh, kind of academic programme, but they can all be achieved through apprenticeships. The only absolute exclusions to that is that you won't find apprenticeships available in medicine, dentistry or veterinary. I'm sure that comes as no surprise to anybody, um, given how traditionally academic those programmes are. <laughs> but pretty much anything and everything other than that is very much open for um, an apprenticeship these days. So first and foremost, apprenticeships are employment. So post 16 or post 18, there are options um, for students to leave school or college 
and step into the world of work. Now, an apprenticeship sits very much in the middle of that, because whilst it is first and foremost employment, there is also the qualification element alongside. Now, because of that, they will be paid a salary. It is employment. And those salaries can actually be really, really generous. So again, if you're thinking back to the, you know, 28 quid a week back in the day, um, the national minimum wage for an apprentice at the age of 16 now is £4.30 an hour, which might not sound a lot, but it's a lot more um, than what it ever was. But more importantly, actually, a lot of apprenticeships you will see have standard salaries of 12 15, 20, even up to £27,000 a year to do an apprenticeship. And the salaries are very, very rarely offered at that minimum wage, but instead are offered as a standard salary, irrespective of how old you actually are. So you are going to see, or you will be very likely to see apprenticeships where it says, you know, if it's the £15,000 salary attached to that apprenticeship, it doesn't matter whether you are 16, 18, 25, 45. Did you know that there is no upper age limit to start an apprenticeship? So actually, we're talking about your children. Maybe some of you fancy a change of career or fancy having a look at apprenticeships yourself. Why not? <laughs> so they are first and foremost employment and your child will be paid a salary and they will have a contract. So they will have the same protections and the same rights as any other employee working in that sector. That includes things like statutory sick pay, annual leave um, and pensions I know that might seem a million miles away to our children of this generation um but as we all know it creeps upon us pretty quickly um so all of that is in there right from the beginning the way that they are structured is that they are 80 percent on the job in work actually doing the job and 20 percent of your time is off the job so if we split that into a five-day working week it's like four days a week you would be in the job learning the skills and actually doing the job and one day a week you would be at a school college training provider of sorts potentially university learning the academic qualification that you would uh, be getting alongside it now it doesn't necessarily have to be four days one day it could be four weeks one week four months one month and um, it will all depend on the nature of the program Typically, apprenticeships can last anywhere between one and four years. Some can take a little bit longer. The main one I'm thinking for that is law. So if you're interested or your child's interested in becoming a solicitor through an apprenticeship route, that is more likely to take around six years. The term standard, some of you who have actually maybe been involved with apprenticeships, maybe you work for organisations that take on apprentices, or maybe <laughs> you may have done an apprenticeship yourself or have other people that you know who have. But the term standard is really quite important. And what that does is it identifies a basic minimum requirement that you or your child would need to meet in order to be signed off as occupationally competent. A standard change is very much in an engineering apprenticeship as it would help in social care, law, accounting, they're all very different. So when it says over 600 standards, it doesn't mean that your child will have to go in and do over 600 types of things, but just how much the scope um, there is with apprenticeships is, is portrayed in that number on your screen. Now I'll talk about levels in a bit more detail in a moment. But ultimately, it's really important to understand that an apprenticeship is a real job with real responsibilities. Gone are the days, you know, when it's just about sweeping floors and making tea and getting paid, you know, a few bob. It's not how it works anymore. You know, there are opportunities for apprenticeships in areas like paramedic science or midwifery now those people will be in there from day one no matter what apprenticeship you do and um, your child will be expected to be in there from day one um, and it is it, you will be required to have those responsibilities especially because a lot of the salaries are um kind of on par with a full-time employee and um, so it's just something to consider and also apprenticeships are not the easy option some of you may know what it's like to both study and work and it can be really difficult to juggle those things now what we're asking for our young people with an apprenticeship is to study and work for a potentially up to six years that's a big commitment and it's a big workload so it's important that actually apprenticeships aren't necessarily the second best option that you know something you do if you don't get the right GCSEs or if you don't quite hit your A levels that is absolutely not the way to frame apprenticeships at the moment in today's day and age they are very much first and foremost good quality fantastic provisions and actually so this is especially relevant for for anybody who is looking around the year 12 13 they can be very very lucrative as well <laughs> so 
I just want to show you now about the apprenticeship levels. So there are different levels, four key levels around apprenticeships, intermediate, advanced, higher and degree. Now, they do have an educational equivalent, but it is categorically, it's imperative to understand that they are just not the same. There are equivalent, but that does not mean that they are interchangeable. So, for example, some of you might be thinking, well, if, you know, some of your children might be in year 11 or they might already have GCSEs. So why consider doing an intermediate apprenticeship? And that's a fair and valid question. The way or the reason why you might consider it <clears throat> is because apprenticeships are assessed by observation because it's about the competency in the workplace so unlike a GCSC where you are well, very likely or perhaps not over the last couple of years because of COVID but generally speaking they're sat through an exam but with um, apprenticeships it is assessed by showing or doing so an assessor would come into the workplace and say show me how you do this demonstrate to me your skill in xyz and then they would have to be signed off so already there's some key differences in the way that these programmes are assessed. And therefore, it's important to understand that if your child does not necessarily have skills within that area, that an intermediate apprenticeship might be a more suitable starting position for them. Not only that, but interestingly, the salary is not representative necessarily of progression up those uh, levels. I have seen level two apprenticeships offered at £27,000 a year. I have seen degree level apprenticeships offered at £12,000 a year. So this is actually especially relevant for, um, you know, looking at years 12 and 13, because a lot of people assume or, you know, think that because you do your level two GCSEs and you do your level three, that the next step is level four. And whilst it can be, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the only way to do it. There are more opportunities intermediate and advanced and therefore not only might you see better salaries but you might see like a foot in the door so you might see some opportunities that say if you start at level two we'll then pay for your level three four five six and seven as well so when you're looking at levels the important thing is to stay open-minded um, don't shut off the idea of an intermediate apprenticeship, you know, if your child is in year 12 and 13, because actually that could be the best opportunity for them in terms of salary, in terms of progression, in terms of opportunity. Having said that, it is um, often the case that some of you, if you are looking at um, kind of what to do post 18, that those higher and degree level apprenticeships become more attractive. <laughs> now, the reason for that is because often the alternative post 18 is university. Anybody who's been to university before might know that it can get a little bit expensive. So at the moment, your tuition fees for university sit at around £9,000 a year. Over the next couple of years, there's going to be a review of that. I've got a feeling in my bones that you're going to see them increase. Um, at the moment, they are sat at 9250 to be specific. Now, most people, if they go to university, will... Um, lean on student finance england and get a student loan a tuition fee loan would pay for uh, tuition fees at nine thousand two hundred and fifty and often a maintenance loan is what um, pays for <coughs> the roof over your head and the meals on your plate now combined they are around twenty thousand pounds a year so um if we're talking around 60 grand worth of debt before that student has even graduated. It's a, it's a big financial commitment to undertake. Now, as I said, for some areas like veterinary and medicine and dentistry, it goes up to a hundred thousand pounds because those programs are five years rather than three. But generally speaking, they come out on pretty lucrative salaries. You know, I think your starting salary for a GP is around 80 grand a year. So that is very much an investment. However, a lot of degree programs, it's not a golden ticket into a well-paid job when you come out, it can be. And don't think that it's not, it can be, but it is not a guarantee. Now, with a higher or degree level apprenticeship, your employer pays first and foremost your tuition fees. So that's all taken care of and paid for. The employer would then pay a salary on top of that. So you might see a salary of, as I mentioned before, around £12,000 a year, which might not seem massive to some of you. However, when the alternative for, for students full time is debt, um, then it might be actually having a £1,000 in your pocket every month is, is certainly not a bad situation to be in. So financially speaking, the higher and degree apprenticeships 
put um, a graduate on a much better financial footing because all of those money concerns are very much alleviated by the fact that the employer picks up the tab for tuition and for the salary as well. Now, your child will still come out with the same degree. So let's say you enroll in the University of Chester and do biomedical science. Well, if you do that as an apprenticeship or you do it as a degree, you come out the same, you know, you graduate with that degree from that university. There's nothing that changes. You don't get a big stamp that says that this was done vocationally or as an apprenticeship or anything like that. You still come out with the same qualification from the same university. You also still get the same NUS experience. That's National Union of Students. That includes discount. Who doesn't love a little bit of discount? Includes your discount cards and access to things like like um, clubs and societies and whatnot. So it's all the same. So it's brilliant. The key difference is then the duration that it takes. So your employer picks up your bills and it can take up to four to six years. So a three-year degree could very easily double in time, but your employer pays through all of that. <laughs> and what is more key, actually 90% of apprentices stay with their employer. So that no guarantee of getting a job necessarily after university turns into a 90% chance that you are going to be kept on um, after a degree apprenticeship. So actually, these programmes are very, very valuable. They're valuable financially. They're valuable in terms of giving a learner a competitive advantage upon graduation. They are um, beneficial in terms of 90% uh, of guaranteed employment. Um, and therefore they are also quite competitive you know when I went to university I just did a, a normal degree I went to a university and did biochem and for me in my first lecture in the first year of that one degree there was about 400 people in the lecture theatre now there are less than 400 opportunities for degree apprenticeships nationally at the moment just to give you an idea on you know, competitiveness. And actually, you will find that a lot of these programmes do require um, a good level of, of academic, you know, standing before you go in. Um, and they do require an awful lot of, um, of investment and commitment as well. So they are hyper competitive, but actually, considering they do alleviate the financial kind of perspective of going to university, they do have the 90% of, of, you know, potential of getting the job afterwards and they do give that competitive advantage in terms of the work experience that your child will get alongside that that's what kind of is the payoff for such a competitive program um <clears throat> now i know that this for some of you who are think you know you've got children in years seven and um, to eleven this might seem you know so far removed from from where your child is now having said that you know it hopefully <laughs> will give you a wider understanding of what it, what's coming um, and where you might position um, or guide your child to have a little look at for later on down the line. Now, you will no doubt be familiar with some, if not all of the employers that are on your screen. And this is just a tiny, tiny example of the um, sorts of employers, these national, international, global employers that see the value in apprenticeships and offer fantastic apprenticeship opportunities. So having said that, though, only 50% of opportunities are offered by these huge, massive organisations. Again, some of you might work for organisations um, that are smaller and recruit apprenticeships. Some of you might run businesses that recruit apprenticeships. Um, so you might already know that a lot of apprenticeships are offered by smaller independent firms. And what it's important, and I'm going to kind of target this advice towards kind of student, you know, Parents, um, parents, carers and guardians of those in years 10 and above is that actually as your child starts to explore apprenticeships and have a little look, it's important for them to not only be looking at the apprenticeship itself, but looking inward about who they are as a person. And that sounds quite philosophical to a degree. But just as an example, a friend of mine went to Dublin and worked for Google. Now, her experience of working for Google is very um, big glass walls, open plan, Everyone just kind of, there was a hustle and bustle. There was hundreds and hundreds of people milling around this enormous glass fronted office in Dublin. And that person, my friend, absolutely loved it. Now, for me, that sounds like a nightmare. I am not the sort of person that enjoys being in that sort of environment. Now, it's important, therefore, to support your child to reflect on what they want out of work. Do they get a kick out of working with those sorts of environments? Or do they prefer a smaller organisation maybe where they can be part of a much smaller team? Does it suit their character? Does it suit their way of working? 
not only about the work environment, but the recruitment processes for these huge firms can take up to 12 months. And they can include things like having to submit an application form, go through different rounds of interviews, online tests, psychometric tests, nonverbal reasoning, verbal reasoning, maths, English. That's before you even get to an assessment center where they might do role play or problem solving. These processes can take an awful long time. That should also give you some context as to how valuable and competitive these programs can be, because if there wasn't a need for it, they wouldn't have all of those hurdles. So is your child somebody who would relish that opportunity and go, yeah, I'm all about all of that. I really want to have a go. You know, the idea of doing all those online tests really excites me. This sounds brilliant. Then great. But if your child is somebody that goes, absolutely not not for me, please do not make me do that, then maybe going with a smaller firm where the recruitment process is probably an interview. Um, and, you know, some people will interview on Friday and be in the job by Monday. That's how quick the, the smaller organizations can turn around. Maybe that is right for them. So it's important as you start to look for apprenticeships, and I would encourage you to start looking no matter what age your child is, uh, because the more information you have, the more of an informed choice um, you and your child can make together. Um, <laughs> but when you're looking at these and making these decisions, think not only about who these organizations are, but is their environment, will where your child be working, does that sit right with them? Are, they, are you going to get the most out of them? Also, these organizations don't necessarily offer better salaries or better benefits packages just because of who they are <laughs> so you might find that a smaller independent firm offers well more than google would for um, the same for example it apprenticeship so stay open-minded not only to the levels of degree of of apprenticeship but also to the people who are offering the those opportunities as well not only that, <laughs> it's important to consider what happens behind the scenes. As we know, like a lot of people already understand that the world of work is a lot different when you're in it to what you thought it would be when you were in school. I didn't know that there were even half, I still don't know half of the jobs and the job titles that are available. And therefore, when we start to look at apprenticeships, I think it opens learners and, well, everybody's eyes to the scope of what is out there. And that's why it's never too early to start looking. I go online almost every single day and see different opportunities or job titles that I didn't even know existed. So as you start to navigate that, you will all, everybody will become more aware of the sorts of opportunities that are available. But if we look behind the scenes, for example, I actually presented into um, a college that was interested, uh, uh, presented to a, an IT cohort. And I said, actually, if we take a look back at all of these employers, you pretty much have the opportunity to work with any of them when you work in IT, because every single one of them has got an IT infrastructure. Every single one of them will have some form of human resources or payroll. You know, they will all have some kind of human management in there. So if that's more of an interest, then you can work for any of these organizations because of the departments that they have behind the scenes. So another thing to consider <laughs> is that, you know, you might think, well, why do I want to work for Starbucks? Because, you know, serving coffee is not really something that I want to do. So an apprenticeship with Starbucks is not something I'm going to explore. How about the fact that opportunities with Starbucks go beyond barista work and more into, you know, logistics. How do they get coffee beans to every single Starbucks in the entire world? You know, who is analyzing their data? Who is hiring and firing their staff? Who is doing their accounting? Who's paying their taxes? Contentious issue. You know, who is in charge of their, their legal team? Um, I don't know if you any, any of you watched the um, Formula One season last year, ended on an absolute whopper um, of a race. Uh, just a bit of context, Mercedes flew their own solicitor out there anticipating a bit of a Barney so if you're interested in working with a solicitor instead of like kind of thinking well I can only work for a solicitor's firm why not work for a Formula One racing team why not work for Airbus why not work for ITV opportunities for different um, roles and responsibilities can be spread around a whole host of different organizations I'm going to pitch IT again because actually it is one of the uh, biggest, most up and coming areas, as I'm sure you can understand, especially after, uh, you know, because of the pandemic. But tech, data, IT, cybersecurity, um, network, all of those sorts of things 
are the opportunities are growing so much and um, that it's definitely you know worth considering looking beyond um, the surface of an organization and looking what can underpin that as well just to give you an idea on salaries, um, these are different opportunities that are available with different weekly salaries. So you can see some of them um, are offering opportunities up to £22,000 there. But again, this is not an exhaustive list. Um, so just, just a bit of context, really, um, <coughs> for that. Now, the way in which you find an apprenticeship is super easy. All you have to do is go on to any um, search engine of your choice, Google, Safari, Bing, whatever it is that you use, and type in three words, find an apprenticeship. It is that easy. The first, um, <coughs> the, the first link that comes up will take you through to the .gov.uk website, and there will be a big green search button that you'll be greeted by, and all you do is click it, and you can pop your postcode in and start to explore. I really encourage you to, to search together if possible, because I think that there's a lot of difference in understanding between loads of different people around what apprenticeships are on offer or what the salaries are or what the potential is with those jobs. And the only way to really get on the same page is if you use it as um, a, a task that you can all do together where possible. So if you can, why not sit down with your young person and spend just 15 minutes having a little look at what's available on there. As I said, stay open minded about levels and um, stay open minded about the opportunities that are available <coughs> and just explore, just have a little look and see what might come up. Um, so hopefully that has given you a little bit more information around um, apprenticeships and around the opportunities that are available and I'll just kind of leave on this note that there is also no limit to the potential of a learner who does an apprenticeship somebody who has done a degree somebody who's done an apprenticeship somebody who perhaps is is more um you know who's gone straight into work rather than doing those qualifications the only limit to their potential it is kind of their own self-belief. And I know that sounds really cheesy. Um, there's only one person in the firm that I work for who's got an apprenticeship, and that is the managing director of the organization. There is no limit um, on those, those achievements that can be made through an apprenticeship these days. And there's so much value um, in those apprenticeship programs too. So I hope this has been informative to you. Please ask any questions that you might have. I'm going to open the floor to, to questions now. I'm just going to have a little look um, in the chat. So, oh yeah, <laughs> so just about how, how the students get apprenticeships. Um, that's just a little way to have a little look. Um, but again, if anybody does have any questions, please, please do take the opportunity to ask. As I said, um, I work for an organisation that manages um, this contract on behalf of the Department of Education. We do not have affiliations with specific organisations. So we're not coming at you with, with any advice that is not other um, anything other than impartial advice and guidance. So please feel free to take the opportunity to, to ask whatever it is that you might feel that you need to to feel a bit more prepared um, or a bit more knowledgeable the other thing I will mention as well is that we do have a series of parent packs available so they are just resources online that you can access that are specifically designed for parents parents and guardians to support your young person um, in in making those steps so if anybody is interested then I will make them available to the school um, and also send forward some links so that you can access those as well. Um, so if there's no questions, I've noticed that none have popped up since I've uh, since I mentioned it. That must mean that you're all um, super aware of apprenticeships, which is brilliant. So what I'll do is I will stop sharing my screen now and pass back and to Miss Lawson. If anybody again has any questions or thinks of anything, just let me know. I will still be here. Thank you. Well, I just want to say a massive thank you, Zoe, for that from all of Crystalton. That's been really informative. Um, and again, as I say, there's no questions that have come in. So just want to thank everyone at home for giving us your time. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask me in school, um, I, the people should know where I am down in ICT too. They're more than welcome to come and ask me for any questions or any advice or guidance. Um, and I will just advertise that we have um, Sylvia Wood in school. She's our careers advisor. She's in school every Thursday for the entire day and you're able to book appointments with her should you 
wish um, and that can be done by Miss Farley in the office so if your child's not had an appointment yet and they're in years 10 or above and they would like one then you're more than welcome to um, organise an appointment. All right well thank you very much for your time everyone um, and we'll look forward to seeing you for our next careers webinar. All right thanks Zoe.